So the Trump administration came out with their plan for dealing with the financial hardship stemming from the coronavirus. So the Treasury Department proposal calls for the authority to send $250 billion round of checks directly to American taxpayers, the first on April 6th and the second May 18th. Payments would be fixed and their size dependent on income and family size, the summary said. The proposed programs to increase loans to small businesses would allow any employer with 500 employees or fewer to receive loans equaling six weeks of their payroll up to $1,540 per employee under the condition that companies must keep paying their employees for eight weeks after receiving the loan. So is this proposal comprehensive enough to deal with the scope of the issue we're facing? The answer is no, because for starters, there's a huge gap between payment periods from April 6th to May 18th. There's also no indication if there are further payment periods after May 18th or how much money is going to be allotted during the payment periods. And if there is a continuation of the payment periods after May 18th, there's no indication of what their frequency will be. And so I think right now a good place to start would be by implementing the universal basic income proposal that Andrew Yang talked about during his 2020 run. And so essentially under that proposal, every adult, regardless if they're formally employed, so this would also, for example, apply to stay-at-home parents or stay-at-home caregivers, would be guaranteed $1,000 per month. So that way it allows for people to plan for the existing financial hardships that they had prior to this pandemic, but also the hardships that are new as a result of this pandemic, but also the ones that have been exacerbated by it. And so right now there is a similar proposal by Tulsi Gabbard in the House and one by Bernie Sanders that would guarantee each household $2,000 per month. And so the second part of the plan is actually pretty decent. So I do think that if there are going to be loans given out to businesses, that a condition has to be that those businesses have to guarantee employment, they have to guarantee jobs for their workers, because it shouldn't be a blank check, it shouldn't be a handout to industry. Because at the end of the day, those businesses would not function, they would not turn a profit if they did not have employees, and so those employees need to be taken care of during a time of financial hardship, and of course, they always should be taken care of. And so I do think an issue with that part of the proposal is that it doesn't go far enough in that it exempts huge corporations such as McDonald's or Walmart, so those companies can still uh, lay off their workers and those workers would not receive assistance from the government under this program. And so that's where it falls short. And it's ridiculous because those companies, of course, pay less in taxes than the average worker, and a lot of them actually pay a negative tax rate, meaning they just get money back from the government. And so I also do think it could be more generous because today I was reading that Denmark has implemented a similar proposal, but the amount of money that's being guaranteed is $3,300 per employee as opposed to the $1,540 outlined in this plan. So that's obviously more than twice the amount of money. And it would go a long way in making sure that workers, for the most part at least, don't experience a huge decline in the amount of money that they receive as a result of the entire economy basically shutting down right now. And so, and also today, uh, Congress, or more specifically the Senate, passed a House bill meaning to deal with the coronavirus. So under that bill, uh, coronavirus testing is free, but notably, co-pays for coronavirus treatments are still not free. And so even if you do have it and you seek treatments in a medical facility, it's gonna be incredibly expensive. And the bill also included a watered down version of paid sick leave. So essentially, workers who didn't have paid sick leave would now be guaranteed two weeks of paid sick leave, but only if they work for a company with 500 employees or less. And so that also exempts massive corporations. And it also shows you the way the Republicans govern, because even during a time like this one, they're so craven that their modus operandi is, okay, well, I'm in power right now. And even though we are, even though right now one in eight workers are, don't have a job or are seeing reduced hours as a result of this pandemic, you know what? I don't care. I'm still going to make sure that I'm helping out 
Amazon and Comcast and all my big money donors. So that shouldn't surprise us at this point, but it's still incredibly disgusting. But also important reminder there, let's keep in mind that the Democrats have, I want to say around a 35 seat majority in the House. And so the reason why that provision exempting employers with 500 or more employees was included was to also uh, you know, pacify reluctant Democrats so then they could vote on this proposal because that's important to keep in mind is that big corporate money, even though it's more prominent in the Republican Party, still plays a huge role in the Democratic Party. And that's why we need more progressives elected into all levels of government, something that I've been emphasizing ever since I started this channel and honestly way before then. And so we'll see where we go, but I will say, and this just shows you how low the bar is, the fact that a Republican White House is just acknowledging that workers may need money during this period is more than what I expected. And so uh, we'll see where we go from here.